parents welcome back to anthro anime um i decided to try to do a new format and see um if this is something that you guys would be interested in if not i can always go back to my traditional reviews or you know do both um but today i wanted to do a review of an anime uh, for you guys while i get ready to put on some makeup and go out um so let's go ahead and get started but today's anime is one that I really, really um, enjoy. And I'm actually watching the second season of this anime. And it is called Dr. Stone. So, for those of you who are new to me um, and my channel, I kind of have an affinity for certain types of anime shows. Ones that kind of have learning or um, actual you know, real life um, pieces or content to them. Like, uh, for instance, um, Cells at Work. That's another one of my favorite animes and it's based around um, actual medical terminology um, and, you know, medical issues that happen in the human body. Um, Dr. Stone is very similar to that. So it's very science-based and a lot of it is um, based around, you know, actual science. So it's an enjoyable show to watch um, and you can actually kind of pick up science terms and, and learn certain little things from it. It's kind of unique in that respect. Um, so the story of Dr. Stone centers around um, a young man named uh, Sinku Ishigami. Um, he is highly intelligent um scientist well he's very much into science he loves science he has a special affinity for um, astronomy um anything having to do with like planets and stars um he's been like that since he was a very young boy and his guardian at the time picked up on his love for science and um, put a lot of money into buying him you know beakers and um you know science lab equipment books um a telescope so he could look at the stars things like that because he picked up that uh you know Sinku was pretty much only interested in science and nothing else so he really wanted him to develop um you know his love for science so of course you know that made Sinku kind of the odd kid out but he still was able to make um, a friend and it's his best friend. His best friend's name is Taju Oki. And they're kind of polar opposites. So while Sinku is um, very highly intelligent, um, he doesn't really get very emotional. He's very logical in everything that he does. Um, his friend um, Taju is the opposite. He's very energetic, very, um, you know, emotionally driven, um, very strong too. So Senku does not do a lot of manual labor and work. As a matter of fact, he pretty much tries to avoid it at all costs and depends on his best friend to do a lot of the heavy lifting for him um, and kind of teaching his friend along the way some things about science. But his friend is pretty much totally um, limitless energy and he's you know pretty tough and his friend and he um, you know they've been friends since childhood so a lot of times whenever Sinku was doing science um, related um, projects he would be with him and be helping you know Sinku with a lot of the the manual labor so um, as they grew up in the teenagers um, the story kind of picks up when they're both in high school and, um, you know, his best friend Taju wants to confess his love to his longtime crutch. Her name is Zarika Ogawa. And she's very sweet, kind girl, kind of um, has her own, you know, clique of girls that she hangs around. But she's very nice. She's not snobby or anything like that. And, um... You know, Taju really loves her and this is going to be his first time confessing his love. He goes to try to confess and then you see this green light, kind of like a, 
a radio wave type light that's radiating out of nowhere and everybody in the world can see it so it's not like it's just them at the high school it's it's radiating over the entire world over the entire planet and it ends up that this wave petrifies them so wherever you're at in the entire world you basically become a stone statue which leads into basically the entire world becoming like a stone world so the premise of it is is yes you turn the stone but you're still alive underneath the stone and you're still have some level of consciousness the world is literally petrified for 3700 years so that's literally enough time for um everything to like get eroded um you know it's basically like going back to prehistoric times because there's not people around to kind of mess up the planet as sad as that sounds um so everything kind of reverts back to how it originally was how he becomes unpetrified his stone cracks and he's able to get out of being petrified so once he gets out of being petrified he sets out to kind of take a look at his surroundings see what's going on in the world and that's when he realized that it's been such a long time that um you know all humanity is still petrified and he's literally like the only person up moving around and then he sets out to find his friend which he finds and he figures out um, kind of a serum that he can use to revitalize humanity. So after he finds um, his friend Taju, they, they look into, you know, mass producing this liquid to, um, you know, set about waking up the rest of humanity and utilizing science, even though it's in the prehistoric times, to make that happen. So that's the general theme of the show. They need somebody who's strong enough to, you know, combat some of these natural predators. So they wake up another man named um, Tetsukasa Shishio. He um, was considered when they were back in high school, the basically the strongest primate. He was a mixed martial artist. He's extremely strong. But not only that, he does possess some intelligence, not at the same level as Senku, but he can figure things out um, and he can adapt. So they wake him up thinking he'll be a great asset to help them, you know, kind of navigate this stone world. But he has other plans because he doesn't like that, um, the fact that when they were in high school, he didn't like the way the world was being run. He felt like, um, you know, the men with power were running everything. And, you know, even if they were weak, they were able to utilize their wealth and influence to be able to still remain in power and be on top. He decides to put a halt to Senku's plans. He's like, I don't want to revive everybody. I only want to revive the youth um, and people who are strong because that way, then you won't have this kind of, um, you know, weak people on top controlling everybody else. It'll simply be based off of, you know, your abilities to survive. And he goes about basically cracking these stone statues, which are people. But when you, of course, snap the neck off of a statue, you've killed the person. It's really a unique show. It's very interesting to me. And... Um, some people will really enjoy it. Some people might think it's a little bit too over the top because the tone of the show does kind of bounce back and forth between like comedy, um, action, drama, slice of life. It kind of um, incorporates all these different ranges, uh, different genres. I really enjoy shows like that where you can really get into it and you know you're learning some things. Um, you have to definitely kind of just let certain things go because it's it's an anime so um there's going to be things that happen in it that you're going to be like uh yeah that's that's crazy but just keep in mind that it's just a an anime um trying to think season two um is out right now too uh i'd say they're probably halfway through season two um, I haven't gotten, I'm not all the way up to date on season two just yet. Um, but there is a season two. 
So you can definitely check that out after you're finished with season one. By the time you're finished with season one, um, season two might be wrapping up. I think it was 24 episodes in season one. So um, definitely give it a watch. Um, I highly recommend Dr. Stone. I love it. I love the characters. Um, there's definitely more than just those three main characters. Um, you'll see a lot of Senku in season one um, because Senku and Taju and um, Azahara split up. He sends Azahara and Taju um, separately um, and so I think season two is focusing more on their journey and season one is more about Senku and how he's building the kingdom of science um, and basically getting ready to go to war with um, Tezukaza and you can kind of see the development of um, Senku as the series goes on. He grows up a lot and learns to um, trust people. He becomes kind of a good professor as well um, because he has to teach other people as he goes along how um, science works because you know a lot of them aren't familiar with science and they're believing that what he's doing is more sorcery related than science. Science you know died out 3700 years ago so they don't know about a lot of things so Senku is the first one coming to um, teach them but um, I would definitely recommend you guys check out Dr. Stone. Um, hopefully there'll be more seasons of Dr. Stone. Um, I really, really enjoy it. And it's a, even if you're kind of like new to that genre of anime where they kind of mix, you know, actual reality with anime, I, I think you'll still like it and enjoy it. Um, each episode is kind of like fast paced too so it's not like you're gonna you're gonna start talking about science and then you're gonna get bored it's just so much going on in each episode that you will never you'll never get bored you'll it'll always hold your attention because there's something new going on in every episode um, as they're kind of building to this climax of this war going on between um, you know the two separate societies um, so definitely give it a watch. Also, if there is another anime series you would like me to comment on or check out, definitely leave it down below. But yeah, Dr. Stone, um, please check it out. I, I really love the series. I really love the characters in it. It's very rare when I can say um, that I love all the characters in a particular anime or love the themes of a particular anime and how it's going. This is my finished look for the day. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in and for your support. Um, I'm hoping to um, add some more designs to my Teespring store. If you guys are interested in purchasing anything from mugs, t-shirts, um, I think I have some sweatshirts on there and it'll come straight to your door um, if you order it from my Teespring store. Um, I'm going to try and put get a coffee started so you guys can just buy a coffee if you wanna support me. And then also I'm thinking about creating a Discord. So if that's something you guys are interested in, um, please put a comment below um, saying you're interested in any of those things. So once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, like I said before, um, let me know what you think of this format. I can do these reviews on like a Sunday and then do regular um, reviews on Saturday if that's something you guys would like to see. Um, and as always, I want you to be safe, be well, and be kind, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.